Hey, what's up, Dirt Nerds? Welcome back to Shift Happens. Here with my buddy, Edgar Hernandez, VP of Operations for Permapier. Yes, sir. Um, what's up, man? How you doing today? Not much. I'm good. I'm good. Good, How are good. you today? I'm pretty good. Um, so you've been with us for over, over 15 years, doing all sorts of things with um, Shift happens, fixing foundations, right. all that good stuff. Right. Walk me through a walk me through a day in the life of Edgar. You know, you have evaluators that are out in the field evaluating homeowners and property managers' concerns. You know, what happens when we're in the when we take information from the field, we put it into the production, then we turn it over to you. Walk us through what's a what's a day in a life like for Edgar? <laughs> Uh, well, first, uh, it's like uh, our overview, uh, the plan of repair that the sales guys uh, bring to operations, uh, make sure that we got uh, the peer uh, installation correct. Um, then we give this prepare plan to our crews, right? They go to their homes, um, introduce themselves to the homeowners, uh, making sure that they know that we're coming, right, on a daily basis. Uh, depending on the size of the job, you know, we're going to be at this house for one, two, three days a week, depending on the size of the job. Um, after that, uh, the crew start actually doing the foundation repair of these homes. Right. Yeah. So, so what what would you say the uh, one of the biggest challenges for you is as a as a VP? Uh, one of my biggest challenges is like just to get uh, the right expectations for the customers, for the homeowners. You know what I mean? Like. We want the homeowner to be happy uh, with the work we're doing, um, and that's that's really the biggest challenge that we have. Just make the customer happy, and they're really happy with the work that we do. So, really understanding, you know, from the evaluation side, making sure that the evaluator understood what the customer's expectations were, so that we could give those to you and make sure that that's seamless when you're communicating with the homeowner, because. Um, what I do know about you is you hate surprises. Oh, absolutely. And like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like surprises are like, I mean, it's, it's fun to solve puzzles, but you know, you can't, yeah. <laughs> it's better to have directions, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Directions are really good. Uh, but yeah. So. Cause I, what I know about you is you like to, you like to fix things. You like to make sure that, you know, people have a good experience. Um, that is correct. What would you say? So when. What would you say important information for a homeowner or a property manager or anybody that owns or engages with us? What kind of information is important for you and your team when uh, when we're collecting that data? Uh, the important for us is, is the, the expectations, basically. You know what I mean? Like uh, we want to to give a message on the work that we do to the customer of what the sales guys told the customer is going to happen. So you want to make sure that you're executing exactly what they Absolutely. said. Absolutely. Yeah. What would yeah. you what would you say your top 3 biggest things that you've dealt with with miscommunication? Uh between the, the top 3 would be uh homeowner uh, not knowing the refund repair that we do. Okay. You know? So them not they have no clue. They're Hey, the guy, the guy just said it was going to get fixed. Right. right. Yeah. So they're basically doing, uh, they see us uh, doing things that they're not actually were told about. Aware you know of. What I mean, like, for example, when we do interior peers, like, well, I didn't know that we're going to be breaking, you know, in my tile. I don't know yet that you're going to be moving my stuff out of this room to be able to do some peers, interior peers, you know. So it's that kind of communication that we don't, that, that, that we miss sometimes from operations to the sales guys and um, because what we do is difficult, right? It it's is. not something that like everybody can just go pick up a shovel, go pick up some equipment and jackhammer through right. stuff. I exactly. mean, we're, you're being asked to go into people's homes where they live. And sometimes we have to break through the floor. We and do. when we break through the floor, I mean, that's a big deal. It so is. It is. if, so walk me through with, um, with expectations, breaking, you know, when we have to go inside of a home and we're breaking through concrete, right? What what can someone expect? What can a homeowner or property manager expect when you have to go inside of a home and break through the concrete to do interior work? Okay, so the expectation would be like, uh, so we bring a jackhammer inside the house, right? So we use this container first. So we try to cover every single furniture in the house, close like doorways, you know, hallways and stuff like that to minimize the dust going from other areas instead of the area that we're working on. 
right? So that we just bring a jackhammer and just break through the floor. So it's it's loud, it's messy, it's dusty, right? But at the end of the day, we try to make everything clean after the, the, the work is completed and make sure that the, the stuff went back how it was when we got to this house. You know, something that's really interesting that I don't think a lot of people know is that we actually do tunneling um, and that those are options as well. Sometimes I've seen where we've gone inside of a home and it's so messy and they're like, I didn't realize you guys do tunneling where we can avoid going through the inside right. of the home, yeah, right? And that's a great option, it right? Is, because it, it, it may cost a little bit more but you're not breaking through the furniture. You're not break or breaking through the uh, flooring Floors. surfaces, the concrete, maybe the cabinets. Right. Uh, we don't move stuff inside the house when we do uh, this type of work via tunnels. So, so. tunneling, walk me, um, walk me through that. If you're going to tunnel <laughs> underneath the home. So uh, we do like partial tunnels and we do like full underpins, right? Um, so on a partial tunnels, we only lift the area that is slow in the house. Right. Uh, we just do like a three by three tunnels under the house, get to the to the cross beams that we, that the foundation has, and put the piers in those areas. Well, that that's the plan of repair that the sales guy bring us, and then we execute the plan of repair. So we do tunnels, three by three. Depends. We do like twenty feet in, then we do like ten feet on each side, depending where the piers are gonna go. Nice. Right? So that I mean that that's gonna cost enough for us to go inside the house and break through the flooring. Right, so when we do full underpins, that means that we tunnel through the whole house. Uh, we follow all the plumbing lines first, right? Because we're gonna be lifting the house off the ground and the plumbing comes with the house. So we try to expose the whole plumbing first, right? Put the piers in place and then lift the whole house off the ground. And that's something really cool that um, I was gonna, you know, one of the things that like, what what's something that, that blew your mind about coming to work for us? Like, what do you think out of everything that we do, what do you think uh, being part of our team? What's something that you really, really dig? What's something that just blows your mind? So um, I started working on the foundation repair business as a crew member. You know, I, when I was in high, in high school on my summer vacations, I used to work with a friend, open pier holes, pressing piers, and that's how I learned this business. And I like, I like, I like doing it on a daily basis. Uh, when I graduated from high school, then I came and work with the same friend and then I walked myself up. So I really like what I do uh, on the foundation side. Um, it's, I mean, it's something, it's an experience basically that, that, I'm, that I'm having uh, on a daily basis when it's, it's something new to learn in the foundation business. And, and I know that um, I know that I'm constantly throwing crazy projects your oh, way that are just every time, every time <laughs> they're like, man, Justin, you really got this job. So like, man, but, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying that, you know, no, that, I know. That, that's you're always like, you're like, like, all right, all right, bro. What, what in the <laughs> world is this? Yeah. I'm like, Hey, we're going to do some helical piers off the side of a cliff and hang off of it and maybe jump or whatever right, or something. Yeah. We get those crazy, uh, prepare plans from you, but Cause I always know when I've done something not, not wrong, but I always know like, cause I'll, I'll get like, you'll call and then there's like a one minute pause. You'll be like, yep. So I've got this, uh, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> Yeah, it happens. It happens. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's that's always like something new to learn. You know? It's cool, right? It because is. like the challenging things like we we're both experts in what we do. We've been doing this about the same time, uh, 25 plus years. Plus right? years yes, I've been doing this. Same, yeah, same 25 plus years. Um, you know, everything there is to know. Oh, not everything, but you know, a lot of you're an expert about operations, foundation repair right. and all of that. Yeah. But what's really cool, like we know the normal routine, but what's cool is to take those challenging projects. Absolutely. Because every time that you have a challenge, you learn something new and you right. learn something new about what, you know, yourself and what the limits of what you can do are. And Correct. it's just, and it, it's cool to get together and work as a team and just say, all right, we've got this crazy project. Nobody else wanted it, but somehow it ended up in our lap, right? Um, how do we make this work? And what's really cool working with you is you have this just diverse um, background of all these different things that you've done w within the operations world that come together to help fix that or make right. it work. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Do you remember when we did those um, 
did those limited access drilled piers inside of uh, this basement with a walk behind mini excavator. Yes, yes, you remember we yes. like cut the outside of the house off and yeah. like push that walk behind mini excavator in. And then did the helical piers through it. Yeah, that was crazy. That's crazy. That was a crazy project. But, uh, <laughs> that was pretty wild. Yeah. So it's... so let's talk about um, let's talk about the uh, QC process, right? So you 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 have the expectations of the homeowner or building owner or whoever it is. You've executed the repair plan. What happens then? Like what what's the work that no one sees that you do? What do you what what happens in the back office? Okay, so in the back office, like uh, I normally um, just like constantly on the phone, um, calling my guys, the the crews, uh, making sure that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know, so we got uh, a process of every job. So they need to be uh, filling up a checklist. So we have a checklist. So, so once, when they leave the office, when they get to the job site, when they leave the job site or when the job is completed. So uh, it's a process that they have to follow. And right? you're so I mean, and, you, and most of that, it's not just phone. It's like you're using a ton of technology. Oh, right? absolutely. You're using Microsoft Teams, yeah. company cam, service Titan, all this different stuff. You're running multiple applications at at different times correct so, yeah which i mean you're an incredible problem solver um every what, problem comes to me basically yeah if there's anything going on out there with a with a customer uh with a crew with a with a lead guy it just comes to me and you know try to fix the problem that we're having in the field and do you have um so do you have any formal like your formal education with any of the technical stuff or is it all um no, we we do. I mean, we get we, we got trained for whatever you know our system we're using or any app or um, um, any of the you know new devices that we give for the crews, and then we train these guys how to use that. You know, we we, we, we show them what they need to be doing with those new uh, devices that we get or the new systems that we're going to be using for these uh, foundation repairs. I think the um, I think the thing that I like more than any of it is that it gives us full visibility on the job site, Correct. right? Yes. Like we can see what's happening in real time to be able to make sure that we're meeting those expectations. If we see something wrong, we can fix it immediately. We can say, hey, that shouldn't look like that. Right. right. So like for one of the examples, company cam is, is one of uh, uh, the systems that we use to take pictures when the crew gets to the job site. You know, so we take pictures before, during, and after. And we can see those right. pictures right when they took them. You know, so and, and anybody can see those pictures and make sure that everything looks good and everything, or, or they follow in the process that we have. Join us next time for part two of Edgar Hernandez's interview. What's up, Dirt Nerds? Welcome back to Shift Happens. <laughs> Can you do that without looking like a serial killer, please? What's up, dirt nerds? What's up, dirt nerds? <laughs>